Nico from Brussels, Belgium writes to me, Hey, Paul, I've been reading up on digital audio and came across the term jitter over and over again. Some people say it's a huge issue that affects timing and musicality. Others say modern DAX deal with it so well that it's negligible. So who's right? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Can jitter really degrade the sound in a way that's audible? Or is this just audiophile hair splitting? What does it sound like when jitter is present? Should I be choosing gear based on how well it handles jitter? Or is it something only engineers need to worry about? Well, engineers definitely need to worry about it. But it's something you should worry about too. So if you think back to, well, first, what is jitter? Okay. Uh, it, it, it's, it's more than just after you have a, a, too many cups of coffee, you get the, the jitters, right? So jitter in digital audio basically is a timing error on th where, where the digital data is moving in time at a frequency higher or high enough that you can hear, okay? So all digital data is based on a clock. So there's this master clock, and this clock is do 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 and it's running at some multiple of the sample rate. And the sample rate, let's just, we're just gonna pick on PCM today. The sample rate maybe of a CD is 44.1, right? 44,100 times a second, there's a sample. And there's a clock that's running at that speed and it goes like this. Now if that clock starts going faster, or slower in a period of time that is within the human hearing. So in other words, we hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So if a thousand times a second or a hundred times a second, more likely, that clock is moving 44.102, 03, 04, and, and down, and within that you know, 100 times a second, it's just varying ever so slightly. Because, look, keeping these clocks steady is not trivial. We use what we call crystals that hold it, quartz crystals that are stimulated and they resonate at a very specific frequency. And, but they, they, they're not rock solid. They drift with temperature, they drift on their own because of cosmic rays, I don't know, they just drift, okay? And most clocks aren't from a specific crystal. They have a master crystal, but then they're derived from there, and they're not fixed. Many of them are moving so much that we have to hook up what's called a PLL, or a phase lock loop, to grab hold of it and then move it so we can keep up with it. And, and you get this moving back and forth in time. And if that movement is within the levels, uh, the limits of human hearing, then yeah, you hear it. And it, it comes across as a, a blurring of, of sound, a, a masking of, of audio. Uh, in when we originally made the direct stream DAC, one of the things Ted constantly worried about was jitter. And we didn't have things like, you've probably seen these master clocks that have these rubidium crystals and ovens and things that, you know, keep time down to eons. Well, that's meaningless. That doesn't do anything. It's only when it moves within the span of hu human hearing. If, if your clock is accurate and it doesn't move, you know, much more than this, within a day or an hour. It doesn't matter, you can't hear it. But when it's moving within the audio band, that's when you hear it, that's when you get jitter, and yes, it matters a great deal. It's why in all of our digital products, we use a product called the Digital Lens that has a fixed clock that doesn't use a PLL, doesn't, and it, it is very low jitter, two picoseconds, but you really can't hear. And how do we do that? Well, we do that by buffering 
the data before it gets to this clock, and that's what we call the digital lens. The digital lens focuses everything down to one fine point and outputs it on a fixed, jitter-free clock. And that's how we get rid of jitter. Other people do it in other ways, some successful, some not so successful. So yes, definitely jitter is a thing, and yes, engineers and you should pay attention to it. All right, hope that helps. Thanks. Thank you.